Hey, so Nexon just dropped a bunch of different announcements and I wanted to go over them real quick with you guys so you guys have a better understanding of what's coming up and the upcoming patches. Most important things, kind of like a no BS video, so let's just get right into it. Uh, let's start with the Ignition Extreme Update Preview. Long story short, uh, we're getting this new event called Misty Island Legacy. There's going to be a nice story and uh, if you guys enjoy that stuff, then it'll be a really nice event um it's gonna have the normal event rewards like growth potions flames nodes um symbols mounts like all that stuff that it's in a regular event um but the most important thing that most people are gonna be talking about is this new item called ancient slate replica um basically this is a totem like the afterlands type of totems but supposedly it is permanent some people say it's not we won't know 100 percent yet until we the update actually happens but Let's just assume it's permanent. We get this totem that you can use and you can actually flame this totem with these lava uh, flames. And I believe you get 101 of them total in the, during the event. And you better hope you get a good flame. Now, these flames are not flame advantaged. And if you know what that means, long story short, um, there's two types of uh, items in the game when it comes to flames. There's either flame advantaged items or, or non-advantaged items. Non-advantage items are like Golux flames. That's why if you ever flame Golux items, they're always like dog flames. They're always terrible. And then if you flame something like Arcane, the numbers are so high, like 130 and 5, like, you know, as an example. So these are non-advantaged items, meaning that the flames don't get too high, but you can still hit something pretty good on it. Um, we don't exactly know the level of this item. We don't exactly know the exact flames that we can hit on it. So we'll see when we get the item. But basically... Um, this is the most important item. You get a flame, that you, you get a totem that you can flame. And everybody should get this. Along with all the other rewards are good. Zero and Beast Tamer will come out. Definitely make these characters, especially Beast Tamer, incredibly important for your progression. Uh, housing stuff, if you care about that. A bunch of new like Christmas type stuff. Uh, the release of Odium, an entire new area for level 275 plus. You know, this doesn't matter for most people, but it is pretty cool to hit this, uh, to hit this area once you're level 275. Uh, and then Extreme Black Mage and Extreme Saren. Currently, mathematically impossible for Reboot to clear this, but it is what it is. Okay, so next update is the upcoming cube change. This is what everybody is talking about right now. Um, just to save you some time, because uh, I read all these updates and I'll summarize it for you. Basically, all the cubes that we know and love, not love, hate, because cubes suck, um, are going to be discontinued and you can't get these items anymore after February 8th. No occult cubes, no master craftsmen's, uh, meesters, red, black, nothing. Um, even in the bo bonus variants as well. Instead, they're going to be replaced with these new cubes that are essentially the exact same thing, but they have a bonus effect. So mystical cubes are going to be the new occult cubes. Bonus mystical are going to be for reg server, uh, the bonus B pot occult cube equivalent. Hard cubes are going to be the exact same as master craftsman's cube. But as you can see here, it says there's a chance of double rank up if used on rare items. So there's a chance that you could tier up from rare all the way to unique with one tier up. Instead of going from rare to epic to unique, you could go, you could go from straight uh, straight from rare to unique. So it's kind of like these cubes have built in DMT into them, which could be crazy. Um, solid cubes. These are the new Meester cubes. Um, again, double chance to rank up from rare. Glowing cubes. These are the new red items. Uh, uh, double chance to tier up from rare you could also tier up a uh, double chance to tier up from epic to legendary it you can do that it is very rare but it can happen uh bright cubes these are the new black cube equivalent where you could choose your potential before and after and there's a chance to double tier up as well bonus uh glowing cube these are like the bonus pots that are normal and red and reg server and bonus bright cube and you could correct me if i'm wrong but uh these bonus bright cubes act like the white cubes in reg server, but I believe red, white cubes are not um, available 24-7 in reg server. So if these are available 24-7, then that's a pretty good thing for bon for B pots in reg. But I could be wrong unless white cubes are available all the time. And then karma solid, karma hard, and, hard and karma bonus uh, mysterious glowing cubes. These are all um, just like the event cubes that you get. So yeah, just to summarize it again, um, all the cubes that we have currently are not going to be available anymore, and they're going to be replaced with these new cubes, basically just renaming these cubes, like just a reskin, it does the exact same thing, but they have a chance to double tier up, similar to like DMT event. 
So the reason everybody's talking about this so much, not not only not because of just this random change, um, there's there's hidden implications with this that could be very bad and could be very annoying. But obviously, we don't know 100 percent yet. But I personally believe there is a high likelihood that we get the KMS tier up rate along with this change. Now, if you don't know what that means, basically our server GRS in North America or wherever you are, um, Global Maple Story, our tier up chance to tier up our pots is much higher than Korean Maple Story. So, you know, like when you're cubing with black cubes to get to legendary, like our chance to tier up is way higher than KMS. And a lot of people are going to be like, what do you mean it's so hard? Exactly. Like ours is easier and people still think it's hard. So here's a little... Um, Oh, I'll get to that later. Here's a little uh, chart for you guys. Basically, in KMS, there's this is this is the line that matters right here. The black uh, the black cube, which is going to be known as bright cube moving forward. Uh, unique to legendary, 1.2% chance. So um, there's a 1.2% chance to tear up in KMS from unique to legendary, which is very expensive. That that turns out to being more than two bill just to get to legendary from unique worth of black cubes. Um, now, uh, in GMS, our server, uh, we don't exactly have 100% the rate at which cubes tier up. Like, Nexon has never officially given us the number. But based off of just, like, years of data, it's about 5% for us. So, it's about four times easier for us to tier up than it is for KMS. Now, the reason why I believe and a lot of other people believe that we can, we're probably going to get the KMS tier up rate is just because of the overall trend that MapleStory has been uh, following so far that we've been aligning with KMS uh, as of late much more than usual. Uh, the removal of totems, we have KMS Starforce costs now as well, and this could be their way of giving us the KMS tier up rate as well. Of course, it's very frustrating that Nexon doesn't release the rates too because they suck at being transparent. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, um, we won't know until it actually arrives so try your best to hold off your judgment i know it's hard because i i think we're gonna get the kms tier up rate as well but you never know what could happen if we don't get the kms tier up update um and we still have the gms tier up rates uh then this is a huge buff for us then this means tearing up our items legendary we basically have perm dmt like that's basically what it is if we get, keep our gms tier up rates if we don't then if we don't and we get the KMS rates, it's actually overall worse than what it is right now without the double tier up rate. So it's still harder and that's going to sting even more because we don't have totems, meaning we have less meso income and cubing gets even harder. So let's hope that we don't get the KMS tier up uh, rate, but you never know. And then the whole uh, fragment thing, this is for a reg server. You could get fragments as well. Uh, cube fragments, you could, um, you know... Um, get these items instead and the last thing or there's two things left uh basically if you have leftover red or black cubes uh they're going to be converted to the new uh glowing or whatever they called uh yeah glowing and bright cubes uh after the update you'll just be compensated with the exact same cubes um and the last thing is they're giving us a dmt on these following dates dmt increases our chance by two times to tear up all our items so this is uh, huge for boss mules in particular, or your main, whatever it is. Um, definitely take advantage of this event. It's only one week after Shining Star Force, so it's going to be hard to get mesos if you zero out on Shining Star Force. You only have a week to get them again for DMT. Kind of unfortunate timing. I wish it was maybe one week after, but, you know, that's Nexon for you. So that's the cube change. That's like the big one. And then the last thing we'll cover is the GMS roadmap. Uh, of the next three months january to march of what events we're getting so in january we're gonna keep continuing our hyper burn and ignition event we already know this new area odium so this is actually really exciting level 275 area and a new symbol and new dailies so all the end gamers are very happy with this this will make kalos clearable as well uh boss extreme mode this is irrelevant right now because nobody in reboot is strong enough to clear it it's mathematically impossible at the moment but one day we'll eventually clear it, and even if we do clear it, the rewards are garbage, so it doesn't really matter. February, we're getting the Neo Tokyo event, and this is the most uh, interesting thing that's going to happen, I'd say. 
uh neo tokyo uh we've gotten this event before i believe uh there's a nice story there's a lot of amazing artwork and the mobs look really sick in this event but um basically there's two rewards from this event that are notable in my opinion uh the most notable the most notable one is the new Mu the old technically old mugong soul um but this mugong soul is within the neo tokyo event and um if we get this soul in our server it will break the game it will 100 percent break the game and i'm praying that we do not get this soul as a reward uh a lot, i know a lot of you can't read it but i'll explain what it does basically there's a 25 percent chance for the soul to be put on your weapon um 25 chance for it to succeed to be placed on your weapon and if it doesn't succeed your weapon is boomed and it works on Genesis weapons, so if you use it on your Genesis weapon, you have to re-liberate 8-month process all over again. Um, is a very, very, very high risk, but the reward is insane. Basically, what this soul does when you activate it, it gives you 100% attack for 1 minute. Meaning, it is the exact same effect as Roar 4 for 1 minute. And there's no restriction you don't have to stay within a zone you can't it's not like you can't move you just get 100 attack for one whole minute it is an insanely broken buff and you could use that with roar on top of it or weapon jump or whatever other buffs on top of it so it is insanely broken if people get this item and they are lucky enough and they succeed and put it on their genesis weapon they will be infinitely stronger than you and there's nothing you could do about it if you don't have it it is worse than badge worse than totems worse than compensation flames worse than lab blocks worse than any compensation or worse than any sort of legacy item that we've ever gotten in the past worse than familiars this gives you more damage if you get lucky and get this item it, it eclipses everything so let's hope we don't get this item because it is way too op um but yeah uh the other notable item that i'd say from the event assuming we get these items we don't know the exact rewards or how they're going to tweak this event but these are the items that were in this and other these items were in this event in other regions so maybe we'll get it but who knows um is the magic throwing knives magic throw knives just like any other star like for nightwalker night lord uh they have 30 attack which is the exact same as balanced furies and if you don't like doing the phantom forest dailies then this is an alternative assuming we get this item in the neo tokyo event uh in other regions it's actually a 31 attack so it's better than balance furies but probably where it's gonna we're gonna get the 30 attack version so it's just as good as balance furies hopefully we get this because i don't want to do the phantom forest dailies um yeah fairy bros golden giveaway this is just every day for about however long this event lasts every day you get rewards oh you don't get rewards every day you check in and then every i believe 10 days you get a reward or every eight days or something like that you get a reward and there's some really good awards for that, so make sure you log in. Uh, cube revamp, we already talked about it. Super Yeti and Pink Bean World. Now, this is another very interesting thing we're getting in March. We got it last year, I believe, as well, around this time. Basically, um, if you've never seen this event, uh, you know how, like, when you select your world, when you log in, when you first launch a game, like Reboot, Barris, Gania, whatever your world is, uh, there's going to be a new world called Yeti and Pink Bean. And you can create these two characters. You can create a Yeti or you can create a Pink Bean. And they both have a whole, you know, set of skills and job advancements and all that stuff. And the objective is to get these characters to 200 and to complete all the quests that are required. And you get a bunch of rewards as you do it that you can transfer to your main. The most notable reward once you get to 200 is the Pink Bean title and the Yeti title. Uh, I believe they give 10 attack, 15 all stat, and 10 boss for those titles. Uh, I believe that's what they give. And they're best in slot titles. They're, they're true best in slot and they're permanent. Uh, and you can transfer to your main those two titles. Now, alternatively, you can combine the two titles together to get one super title that's even better than both of them. And you can only put that on one character. And that is a true best in slot title. There's nothing better than it. Um, so yeah, you can decide. You could either get them both to 200 and you send one title each on two characters that you care about or you can combine them together and put them on one character and you have one super title um yeah it's really really good um i remember i i've done both of them and from my experience um yeti is much easier to do than pink bean it takes about 15 hours to train yeti from zero to 200 
definitely don't do it all in one sitting. You have a lot of time to do this event. Try to do like maybe one hour a day if you can. But um, yeah, don't do it in one sitting. These are very annoying in my opinion. And then Pink Bean is even harder than Yeti. Um, so yeah, try to get it done over time. I would not recommend just grinding it all out in one sitting. Uh, Grand Athenium update. This doesn't really matter that much. Uh, you can relive like past lore in the Arcane River and whatnot. Um, but it's whatever. Uh, yeah, Odium level 275 plus, but, and then there's some more details here, but we went over it and yeah, that's pretty much all that's happening in the next few updates. Um, hopefully you like this kind of video. Let me know if you want me to do more of this types of videos, like with in regards to updates and stuff like that. I really hope it wasn't too long. I tried to go over everything very concisely, get to the main point of every single event. So you guys get what's coming without any like fluff. So yeah, uh, if you enjoyed it please sub and follow me on Twitch so you can watch me uh, play this game live. And I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you guys.